Let us look at certain guidelines about pranayam. These are given in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. It says that parana main yuktain sarva rog kashtiyo bhavet ayukta bhyas yogain sarva rog samudgama. Uh, when the pranayam is practiced as per the prescription, we can get rid of all diseases. But all diseases can arise if we follow improper practice. So, every practice must be treated with respect and caution. There should be no violent respiration, no extended kumbhak meaning upholding the breath beyond a comfortable measure and no forcing of breath, body or mind should be done. That is a basic, that is a ground rule of pranayama. Next is uh, taken from this Yoga Churamani Upanishad. It says that Yatha Siho Gajo Vyagdro Bhavid Jasha Shanai Shanai Tathai Sevito Vayurantha Hanti Sadakam. Just as the lion, elephant, tiger are brought under control slowly and steadily, uh, similarly prana should be controlled, otherwise, it becomes destructive to the practitioner. In order to qualify for the pranayama, must undergo the process of shat karmas. Process of shat karmas helps us in controlling the prana, the moment of breath. We are going to look at the shat karma in a short while from now. Another guideline is given in the Gheram Sanhita, which says that mitaharam vina yastu yoga rambham tu karyet. Nana rogo bhavetasya kanchid yogo na siddhyati. Nana rogo, many diseases can happen. Kinchit yogo, not a iota of yoga can be, uh, can be realized, can be experienced without what? Without mitaharam, without control in ahar. So, control of diet is very important for pranayam to give result. So, practitioner of pranayam should choose the balanced diet. We have had a previous session on ahar, you can refer that and that is a kind of a initial condition, a prerequisite for, for, uh, for us to be able to perform pranayam and get the benefit of that. Guidelines about place and timing. So, the pranayam should be practiced in the clean environment to minimize the effects of pollution. Uh, ideally, the place of pranayam should be somewhat isolated away from the crowd, away from the interruptions and noise. Uh, avoid practicing in the direct sun or wind. Uh, rays of early morning suns are beneficial, but after that we should avoid practicing in the direct sun, under the direct sunlight. Uh, timing is equally important. Uh, early morning is the best time for the practice. At the time of the Brahma Muhurta, Brahma Muhurta is approximately 2 hours before uh, sunrise. Uh, it should not be practiced after meals. Uh, if you are doing Kapalabhati or uh, uh, Brahmari or Sheetali, we must wait for 3 hours after meal before practicing the pranayama. As uh, we looked at, the preparation is very important for pranayam. Shatakarma, six practices, prepares our body for the pranayam and the higher practices like pratyahar, dharana, and dhyan. These practices are neti, dhauti, nauli, basti, kapalabhati, and tratak. Neti is the nasal cleansing. Uh, it is a process intended to purify the nasal passage and bathe the sinuses. It can be done with the, uh, with, with, uh, with a pot, specially designed pot and using the saline water and it can also be done with the, 
with the thread of a rubber band it is it comes specially for this practice dhoti that is a cleaning process for the alimentary canal uh, including the esophagus the mouth and stomach intestine and rectum there are couple of methods uh, by using cloth or by using the saline water these are the different methods through which dhoti can be performed noli is the uh, cleansing practice for the abdomen which uses abdominal muscle itself to massage and stimulate the digestive organs uh, uh, the picture and the videos of uh, swami ramdev ji performing noli are very popular you can watch that in video i am not describing these practices in detail in this lecture because this lecture is not meant to guide for the practices and particularly little more complicated practices the purpose is to make ourselves familiar to the practices and connect all these things with the positive psychology and many more benefits which are beyond positive psychology another method is basti this method is purifying the large intestine either with or without water that is also a very important process kapalbhati many people think that it is pranayam but in the classical sense kapalbhati is not pranayam it is a cleansing process and probably the easiest cleansing process which can be performed by all of us in the beginning before we uh, practice pranayam so it's a breathing technique that means shining forehead kapal is the forehead uh, bhati means shining or cleansing in this practice breath is forcefully exhaled through nostrils by strongly drawing the abdominal muscles after which the inhalation happens naturally and it is repeated 20 times in a quick rhythmic succession in the uh, literature it is suggested that 48 per minute is the ideal speed for the kapalabhati but if you are doing it first time if you are doing it after long time the speed can vary the important thing is that you should not exert the system and you should not uh, try to go beyond your limits when you start the practice the essence of yogic practice is that you gradually in a non violent way in enhance your capacity a tratak is again a preparation practice for pranayam and it can be uh, very useful for students because the additional benefit of tratak is enhancing concentration our ability to focus on one thought swami vivekanand said that essence of education lies in ability to focus and pursue valued goals if i am able to focus on something i can make it happen tratak is a practice of uh, using different objects so the most uh, popular way of performing tratak is keeping the lamp at the level of your eyes is uh, keeping keep watching it focusing on that and there are some other steps as i told you i am not going to describe the whole technique because i want you to go to the videos uh, put up by the masters and uh, swami ramdev ji has put up lot of uh, detailed videos about the tratak process as well you can follow that the essence of the practice is that you focus your attention on a lamp on the light of the lamp which is at the level of your eyes and when you continue to observe that and keep your attention to that something happens that is very good for not only building our capacity for the pranayam but also builds our capacity for dharana for dhyan and enhance our ability to focus on one thought or one object or one problem which is the essence of academic success and career success as well uh few more guidelines for pranayam this is probably uh a complicated process so we must be aware of the guidelines sequence so pranayam should be performed after asana should not be performed before asanas and should be performed before meditation practice uh, natural fibers such as cotton or wool are the best to sit on 
uh, for the practice of pranayam and all breathing should be through the nose except where otherwise is specified and we will see there are few practices of pranayam where you can breathe and you are supposed to breathe through mouth, but for all other practices uh, nasal breathing must be done. The nasal cavity should be regularly cleansed by jalaneti for efficient op operation of the nostrils. Posture is extremely important, this is asana. Uh, ability to sit comfortably in a meditation asana is a kind of a requisite for successful practice of pranayam. Both concentration and technique are hampered by the poor posture. So, we must uh, identify that posture, that asana in which we are comfortable and that posture is well identified in the classical yogic literature. The chest, neck, head must be in the one vertical line during the practice, so that the spinal cord remain straight should not allow to become crooked or collapse at the when we are sitting. The best posture for practice are uh, Padmasan, Siddhasan, uh, Siddha Yogi Asan or uh, as in the in inner engineering program it is taught uh, Ardha Siddhasan and also Swastikasan. These are some of the postures which are most commonly uh, adapted, most commonly held for performing pranayama.